Hey, welcome back. It's Coach Rory. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. If only this part of the famous Irish blessing held true when it came to running. If you've ever run into a strong headwind during a race, you know that it not only spoils your chances of a PR, but crushes your spirit as well. Any runner, especially one who lives out in the country, up in the mountains, or along the expansive plains of the Midwest, knows how wind negatively affects running performance. In fact, I had the privilege of watching the 2020 Olympic marathon trials, which took place on an especially blustery day in Atlanta. It was fascinating to watch how the wind changed the dynamic of the race, forcing many runners to run more tactically and depart from their previously planned paces. So, have you ever wondered how running in windy conditions is going to affect your workout or race? How much does running into a 10, 15, or 20 plus mile per hour headwind actually slow you down? What if the wind is at your back? How much faster will your mile splits look? In today's video, we'll try to come up with the rule of thumb for wind resistance so you can gauge its impact on your performance. Make sure you have a pen and pad ready for this one because we'll be diving into a lot of data. <music> The topic of wind resistance and aiding or impairing athletic performance has received at best spotty coverage over the years. Much of the initial work was hammered out in the 70s and 80s, while more recent work tends to focus on the effects of wind in the sprint events, perhaps inspired by the surge of sub 10 second 100 meter times beginning in the late 1990s. The first study we'll look at was published way back in 1971 by L.G. Pugh, a researcher in London. In his experiment, he had a subject, there was only one, an international caliber middle distance runner, run along a treadmill, cleverly mounted inside a wind tunnel. Pew measured the oxygen consumption of his runner over a variety of running speeds and wind velocities. He found that oxygen consumption, and therefore energy cost, increases with the square of the airflow over the body. This means that the performance hit of a 10 mile per hour headwind is four times greater than that of a five mile per hour wind, and that the additional resistance of running into a steady wind at 540 mile pace is twice that encountered when running into the same wind at eight minute mile pace. In an additional experiment, Pew measured the oxygen consumption of his runner while running alone into a headwind and compared it to running one meter behind another runner. Interestingly, Pew's study found an 80% decrease in wind resistance when drafting off another runner. This also corresponded to about a 6% drop in oxygen consumption for the given pace. With my slim, short frame, my high school coach always encouraged me to run behind taller runners who would block the wind for me. I have to say it seemed to work. Pew confirmed these findings by taking airflow measurements in the wake of a single runner and then computing the effect of air resistance for a runner-shaped object one meter back. From his measurements, it appears that there is still some benefit from drafting even two or three meters behind another runner. In a later study published in 1980, CTM Davies investigated the effect of headwinds and tailwinds on three subjects using a similar treadmill and wind tunnel setup. Like Pew, he found that oxygen consumption increases and therefore performance decreases proportionally to the square of the wind speed. While a tailwind does aid performance significantly, you only get back about half of what you put into a headwind when you turn around and run with it at your back. On a treadmill, any tailwind that exceeds your running speed is wasted as you must remain in place on the treadmill. However, results from real world track races make it clear that even in outdoor running, the benefits of a tailwind do not entirely offset the drawbacks of a headwind. Davies' study also demonstrated that a tailwind effectively eliminates air resistance. Let's imagine a runner who's clipping along in a six minute per mile pace with a 10 mile per hour tailwind. This tailwind equivalent would increase your performance by about six seconds per mile. However, let's say you turn around and run that same six minute pace into a 10 mile per hour headwind. This same wind would slow you by about 12 seconds per mile. Keep in mind this rule is rather rough and based on treadmill studies, but it's reasonably applicable to racing speeds for most road runners. Davies also conducted some crude measurements of drafting behind other runners and found his data in agreement with Pew. Trailing another runner by a meter or so can remove up to 80% of the energy cost of air resistance, making it a very attractive decision on a windy day. In fact, according to Davies, even running a mile on a windless day tucked behind another runner could save you four seconds versus running it alone. That's about one second per 400 meter lap. One final consideration when it comes to wind 
is its effect on the heat removal from the body. As pointed out in a 2012 review of climatic effects on marathon running by Greg Spellman, air resistance affects not only the forces you have to overcome, but also your body's rate of cooling. While running with a tailwind certainly helps you move faster, the effect of running in still air on heat removal cannot be ignored. In other words, if you're running on a hot day, the increased heat retention caused by a tailwind is bound to detract from your performance. Conversely, there are benefits to the increased cooling gained from a headwind in warm weather. Even though you may be slowed by the wind, the fact it's keeping you cool may help you gain back lost time on a hot day. Unfortunately, Spellman's study didn't give us many specifics on how a runner's pace is impacted, but it's still an important reminder that the wind is not always the enemy. Check out the weather history for the area where you'll be racing to see which way the wind tends to blow. Then by looking at the course map, you can determine if you're more likely to face a tailwind or a headwind. Try to enter a race where you know there will be plenty of competitors running the same pace as you so you can save energy by drafting. In fact, you can even team up with other runners to take turns blocking the wind. In a marathon a couple years ago, a small pack of runners and I fell off the lead group and we found ourselves battling a fierce headwind. After chatting briefly, we decided to take turns leading the pack, rotating a new runner every half mile or so. Not only did this make the effort significantly easier, but the sense of camaraderie made the miles tick by much faster. When it comes to training, the good news is that you get to choose your route. If running in a city or urban area, you might run from east to west if the wind is coming from the north or south. While you may still get an occasional side breeze, houses and other buildings should block most of the wind. If there's no protection or you live in an open area, I personally prefer to run with the wind at my back to start off, especially if it's cold out. Then after I'm nice and warmed up, Finishing the run facing the wind isn't as brutal. However, this is a matter of preference, as I know some runners who do the opposite. Keep these numbers in mind next time your runner race looks to be a windy one. As a rough rule of thumb, a headwind approximately equal to the pace you're running at will slow you down by 12 seconds per mile or around four seconds per kilometer. If the same wind is at your back, it'll make you about six seconds faster per mile or roughly two seconds per kilometer. Fortunately, you can offset nearly 80% of the impact of air resistance by drafting a meter or so behind another runner or a group of runners. Who else lives in a windy climate? Do you have any other tips for running in the wind? What other questions do you still have related to wind resistance and how it affects your running performance? Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and have the notifications turned on so that you can keep up with all the latest content. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, have a great run today.